Like shorts with Mimi Glacy. I hear, Adam, that you're a new face with the Huron Pines AmeriCorps team. Tell us about who you are. Uh, so I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, I grew up here, or I grew up in Michigan. Um, I went to Eastern Michigan University and I studied environmental science. And uh, now I'm here in Alpena, serving with AmeriCorps. You've never been to Alpena beforehand, right? No, never been here before. You will have an <laughs> awesome experience. The summertime is great. Now, Nimi Glacy is a long title. What is Nimi Glacy? And what do all those um, letters stand for? Yeah, so eight letters. Uh, so NEMI GLACI stands for Northeast Michigan Great Lakes Stewardship Initiative. And it's a network of community and education partners that do place-based stewardship education with students here in Northeast Michigan. So those are a variety of projects, one that we'll go into a little bit later today, but they range from pollinator gardens to invasive species studies and um, removal to microplastics and marine debris. Now we know that's a huge important project and undertaking here for Northeast Michigan students. Yeah. Now Adam, what will you be doing for these next 10 months? Uh, so I'll be primarily working with teachers on the Be Wet program, which is a program about watershed studies. Um, for example, some teachers have salmon in the classroom and we'll be releasing those salmon into rivers in the spring. Oh, wow. Are you really excited about that? Yes, very excited. Very have you excited. already started working with students? Yes, I have. I've gotten uh, my first exposure to students in the past uh, co couple of weeks. Um, it's an interesting experience. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun working with kids. <laughs> if you remember the names of the schools, where have you been going to help with students and their projects? Uh, so we've been to Alpena High School, um, Ella White uh, Elementary. Um, we've been to Roger City. High school. Oh, that's a drive. Yeah, quite a drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those schools so far. Awesome. Now, Meg, I love experiments. I love getting my hands dirty. So, yeah. what's this in front of us? So, Ella White Elementary students are actually coming up with a protocol to look for microplastics in sand. So, we've got some sand here. That sounds so tedious. Yeah, it is. And they, you know, through their outreach with the public, they're actually putting together like a video that they can share with other teachers with this really simple equipment. So teachers can do this throughout Michigan, even like maybe in California, they could use the same protocol. So it's really cool that it can be shared and spread and uses really simple equipment. Can we see what's inside? You were just yeah. opening it up. Yeah, so we've got like a couple of peanut butter jars here and then just a coffee filter with a rubber band. And what I've done is added like one tablespoon of yeah, Michikiwa's yeah, um, sand is in the bottom. And then I added one cup of water and one drop of soap. And what you would do is stir this up for about... What type of soap? Like dishwashing? Yeah, liquid? it's like Dawn dish detergent. Yeah, and you stir it up. And by stirring it up, it separates the plastics from... May I? Yeah. Now, Adam, have you been doing this with students? Not yet. We haven't run uh, very many experiments on microplastics, but we will be come spring. Now, when the students put the soap in the water with the sand, mm -hmm. what next? So, after stirring, the plastics are less dense in the sand, so they'll start to float to the top of the water. And then we would take the spoon out and filter it over the coffee filter. So slowly pouring over the coffee filter and you would see those less dense like microfibers and microplastics come to the top. No. And then we can use Oh, that's what I was glasses. thinking next. I was, yeah, I was, to I was about take to ask look. myself, how would I be able to see the microplastics? Right. Now would you be able to see them like up close, like how small are they? Yeah, sometimes you can see them with a the naked eye, um, especially like the microfibers. And what you're looking for are fibers that aren't natural colors, like greens or browns. You're looking for like reds or oranges, you know, something like that that may have come from like a fiber from a shirt or a bag or something like that. Uh, and do we know any of the dangers with the microplastics in our Great Lakes? Yeah, so microplastics break down from bigger plastics, like plastic bags. Um, as the sun hits them, they break down to smaller pieces and they can get in our food chain. So fish will mistake them as food and eat them and then we eat the fish. So we're essentially like eating plastic, which is not great. <laughs> now Adam, we have a short time left, but what do you hope to get out of these next 10 months here in Northeast Michigan? Uh, I hope to learn about uh, conservation and to develop my professional career, uh, as long as, or as well as uh, 
get some experience with students. I have not uh, worked with kids very much, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> All right, Adam, thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate it. Come back anytime. Thanks. Meg, it's always a pleasure to have you. Thanks, and I had a good time with this little science experiment. Oh, yeah, definitely. Understanding a little bit more about microplastics. Now, if people want to get involved in what Nemi Glacier is doing, what can they do? Yeah, so Nemi Glacier is a nonprofit, so monetary donations are always great. It takes about $30 per student to fund this place based education work that we do. Um, they can also check out our website, nemiglacier.org. And we have an upcoming regional networking meeting next Wednesday. Okay. So if they're really um, interested in getting involved, maybe volunteering, if they're a local community partner, an educator that wants to do more with their classroom, they should definitely check out our website and get registered. 